Hey everyone, uh, it's good to be able to talk to you again on this Monday. Um, thank you for listening or watching or however you're engaging with this. These Monday update videos are just an opportunity for us to pull back the curtain and share a little bit more about what's going on in the life of Mosaic. And so we thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm here with John McHale. Hey, John. Hey, everybody. Good to see you, man. Uh, I, I wanted to thank uh, the people of Mosaic for being flexible over the last week as we once again had to change and adapt to just be mindful about the negative trend line for COVID-19 in Dallas and in Dallas County. Um, we wanna to continue to be a people that are marked by wisdom as we consider what it means to be a good neighbor and to be hospitable uh, to the vulnerable in our church and in our community. And so we thank you for your flexibility and grace as we continue to try to navigate uh, what, what it means to lead during these uncertain times. And so thank you for your patience as we continue to learn and continue to think through how to do that with wisdom and with grace. Um, and what a good reminder, too, that while gathering is a very significant and formative aspect of our life as a church, it's not the only aspect of our life as our church. And we're no less the church when we don't gather than when we, we do gather. Uh, it's just a different perspective. It's a different angle. It's a different dimension to our life as a church. And so I'm um, really grateful that we have gotten the opportunity to gather uh, and looking forward to doing that again. But in the meantime, grateful that we get to go out as a spirit empowered people uh, to live our lives together, whether it's on text message chains and praying for one another or gathering to pray this Wednesday night or uh, seeing each other around our neighborhoods or loving our neighbor or serving our city. These are all ways that we walk in participation in the life of the church and we're grateful for all the ways that God has acted at Mosaic. Um, I wanted to have John on to talk just about two things. The first is about gospel communities. And so John, summers are a really interesting time for small groups, home groups, gospel communities. Typically if you're in a group, uh, summer can be a really, a really interesting time to try to figure out, okay, what does it mean for us to be a group together uh, this summer? And so uh, that's compounded certainly this summer by everything that's going on uh, with COVID-19 and the pandemic. And so I would love for you to just share a little bit uh, about your heart. If there are people that are listening to this and they're in gospel communities, how would you encourage them to think about their participation in their group over the course of the summer and really July and August? Hmm. Uh, well, thanks for having me on, and thank you for the question. Uh, it's a good question. And a uh, couple uh, weeks ago, I was just praying, uh, asking God, like, what what do you want me to pray for for our gospel communities? And uh, two things that He gave to me in, in that prayer time was unity and faithfulness. And I think with everything going on uh, with uh, COVID and some of the uh, social unrest and injustice that we're being confronted with. And actually, like, I, I mean, I'm just a little confused and uh, exhausted by the whole, like, I, I knew that there was gonna be something in the fall as far as like rising COVID cases, but this has happened much sooner. And there's just kind of this confusion and frustration growing in me. And I don't know if you can relate to that, but it's such an important time for us if, if you are in a gospel community, to really strive for unity and to press into relationship with one another. And so if you're in a DNA group, uh, just really whatever you can do to take a step towards the people in your DNA group, uh, reaching out uh, with a text or a phone call, uh, doing something that's outside the regular routine is going to be a huge win. One of the things that I've been sharing with our GC leaders is this season is all about the little wins. And so it's going to feel like uh, you, you participate in something uh, and you're just going to be like, man, was that even worth it? Uh, was, was it, it? It didn't live up to the expectations I had for it. But in this season, those little things can, be, can have huge impact uh, in a person's life. And so whatever you can do to strive for unity, but then also faithfulness is there's just a unique uh, opportunity for us in this season just to be faithful to being a part of our gospel community, to watching the digital service towards um, spending quality time. Like as a Christian, this is just a great opportunity to press into faithfulness and to persevere and to seek the Lord in these days. Um, and so that's kind of what I would say as far as an encouragement. That's great, man. Um, that, that resonates a lot with me. Even in the life of our own group, I think one of the things that we've been doing this summer 
is, okay, how can we really just go deeper with one another and get to know each other better in small ways? So like we've been going through this curriculum. It's not something that we've typically done at the GC, but we're doing it this summer. And the conversation has been really rich. And I feel like the group is getting to know each other better. And that's been really fruitful. And so faithfulness, unity. So let's say there's somebody who's kind of jumped into Mosaic's life during this pandemic, right? I mean, like in the last, let's say they got in right at the first of the year, or they jumped in in the spring, or they moved to Richardson recently. I've met multiple people like that have hopped onto a prayer call or a book club or something who have told me, yeah, you know, I've started to come to Mosaic during this time. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. I mean, what, a, what a crazy time. If that's your story, then thank you for jumping in. And I'm so sorry that this is kind of the front door for you during this time. But um, if there is somebody who's involved at Mosaic right now, but they're not in a GC and they're feeling a little bit on an island, how would you maybe how would you point them to getting involved broadly in the life of the church or even in the life of a gospel community? Yeah, I, so I, I would I would please, please, please reach out to me. I would love to hear from you. Um, I think there is such a, so the temptation for that person who's joined into Mosaic and is maybe kind of like, I, I think I should be in the gospel community. I know I want to eventually get in one. Uh, the temptation might be to say, I'm just going to wait till COVID blows over and things go back to normal. And what I would say is don't wait. Um, please, please, please press in because um, this is the, the, the ministry of gospel communities has never been more meaningful in the life of the church than right now uh, because we, we don't have a routine, regular, formational corporate gathering. And that's a hard thing for anyone uh, who's trying to live a life uh, of, of discipleship with Jesus. And so I would say, press in, please reach out to me. Obviously, you could reach out to anyone you know at Mosaic, and they could share a little bit about their gospel community. And they could probably point you and make build, make some connections. Basically, the, the two things that we're doing is we're either trying to integrate folks into existing groups. So maybe there's a gospel community in your neighborhood that actually has like an opportunity for you to jump in. And so that's that's one way that we would direct you. Um, but the other way would be just grouping up folks that are interested and in forming something amidst COVID. Uh, it would just be something that I would be thrilled to do. So that's awesome. Um, so John, changing uh, our topic here, uh, you're, you're leading the prayer night this Wednesday night, and um, it is on bringing our joy to, into the presence of God, right? Bringing our happiness, our joy, our celebration into the presence of God. So talk to me a little bit about what we're going to be doing on Wednesday night and um, how people can tune into that. So I, I don't want to presume that everyone is like me. But I will say that my tendency is to focus and fixate on what's not going well in my life, mm -hmm. uh, in my discipleship, in my family life, and just in, you know, my, my broad life. Um, and this prayer night is going to be kind of a stake in the ground where we are going to focus on what God is doing and celebrate that. Mm -hmm. um, and Hopefully, uh, by doing that, the Lord will cultivate some joy in us. Um, and I'd also like to spend some time just asking for the Holy Spirit to give us joy. Um, it can be, I, I, what I have learned in my own discipleship with Jesus is God loves to answer that prayer. <laughs> when his people come to him and say, we want joy, please give us joy. Yeah. He, is, he is so faithful uh, to give us that joy. And it's going to, su it, it surprises me sometimes when I'm like, wow, I'm so joyful and happy. Yeah. Um, and so that, that's really what we're going to do is we're going to try and uh, step in to celebrate what God is doing and then ask God to give us joy. Yeah. Yeah. I've loved our prayer nights um, because this summer we're focusing on bringing our emotions into the presence of God, lining it up with our series over the course of the summer through the Psalms, which uh, is that's what why we're preaching through the Psalms is because we're trying to learn how we bring our emotions, how we feel into the presence of God. And over the course of the summer, we've had nights where we prayed prayers of lament and sadness, learning how to bring our sorrow and grief into the presence of God. We've had nights where we've talked about fear and anxiety, learning how to bring fear and anxiety and worry into the presence of God. And yet joy is often an emotion that when we feel, we feel like, okay, we're good. A lot of times we don't actually, like in our sorrow, we feel dependent. So we'll move 
into God's presence, even if we don't know how to, we'll feel the need to. But when we're experiencing joy, it's really, uh, I think a lot of times we haven't really learned how to bring that into the presence of God through rejoicing and through thanksgiving. And so I really hope that uh, you'll make it, I, I know it doesn't, when you're thinking about bringing joy into the presence of God, it doesn't admit, immediately grip you in the same way that sadness or sorrow would because those feel so needy and dependent. But when we learn to bring our joy into the presence of God, what we find is that God often multiplies the experience of that joy and deepens it um, and uh, sustains it. And that's a real incredible part of what it means to, to bring our joy into the presence of God. So John, thanks for jumping on this uh, video with me today. Um, I really appreciate that. And tremendously grateful for all of you who are uh, continuing to participate with us in this. We want to continue to serve and bless you, the people of Mosaic, and continue to just speak honestly and candidly as we go through this summer that is really unprecedented um, for us together. And so as you go from here today, bless you in the name of Christ Jesus, and I hope that your week is fruitful in delighting in him. All right, bro. Thank you.